Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how to test the defrost thermostat for a fridge. If the evaporator coil is covered with ice, this test can be done to find out if the thermostat is the cause. I'll be using a multimeter with a temperature probe to measure the temperature of the thermostat, a second multimeter to measure the resistance, some speaker wire, and electrical tape. To check the accuracy of this test, I will check a brand new thermostat first, and then I'll check one that's 12 years old. Before we can begin, we need to find out the upper and lower temperature limits of each thermostat, which are printed on the side. Here's the information for the new thermostat, and to find the limits, I will start by looking for a dash. In front of the dash, there should be a number, with the letter L in front of it, and after the dash, there should be a second number, followed by the letter F or C. F indicates that the numbers are given in Fahrenheit, and C means they're in Celsius. The upper temperature limit is indicated by the first number before the dash, so for this thermostat, it's 6.7 Celsius. The lower limit has to be calculated by subtracting the first number and the second number, so 6.7 minus 14.5 gives us a lower limit of negative 7.8 Celsius. This can be a bit confusing, so make sure to remember that the second number is not the upper limit, and it should be subtracted from the first number to get the lower limit. Let's find the limits for the other thermostats now. Look for the dash first, and we have 60 in front, so that's the upper limit. To get the lower limit, subtract 60 minus 32, and that's 28 Fahrenheit. Next, I'll quickly explain what the temperature limits are for and how the thermostat works, and then we'll do some testing. So the thermostat functions like a switch, connecting and disconnecting the two wires coming into it. When it cools down to the lower temperature limit, it connects the wires, and when it warms up to the upper temperature limit, the wires are disconnected. The signal from the thermostat is sent to the control board and it's used to determine when to start and stop defrosting the evaporator coil. Defrosting is only allowed to start when the lower limit of the thermostat is reached and it ends when the upper limit is reached. This ensures that the defrost cycle is only started when the evaporator coil is cold and it ends when the coil has warmed up and the ice has melted. So if the thermostat is faulty, the defrost cycle might never start, or it may start at the wrong temperature. If it doesn't start at all, ice will build up on the evaporator coil, and if it starts when it's too warm, the excess heat could spoil the food in the freezer. Alright, so now that we know everything about these thermostats, let's figure out how accurate this test is by testing the new thermostat. To mount the temperature probe, I'll remove the clip first using a flathead screwdriver. Pry under the clip, and it will pop right off. Now start some electrical tape on the side. Place the temperature probe in the middle of the metal surface, and tape it down, pressing the tape down evenly to keep the probe tight on the thermostat. It's important to make sure that the probe is in direct contact with the thermostat for the most accurate reading. Next, I'll extend the wires on the thermostat using some speaker wire. Twist the ends together and cover them with electrical tape. And now I'll connect the multimeter leads to the ends of the speaker wire. The multimeter should be set to the ohm symbol to measure resistance, and the range should be set to 200. If you're interested in any of the tools that I'm using in this video, I will have links to all of them down in the video description. Now to test the lower temperature limit of the thermostat, I will cool it down to the limit by placing it in a freezer. I have seen some videos recommending to cool down the thermostat using ice and water, so I just wanted to show you guys that this doesn't work. The lower limit of the thermostat is below freezing, and ice water can only cool it down to about 34 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So let's place it in the freezer now. I'm placing it on a towel to make sure it cools down evenly. And I'll arrange the wires to minimize the gap in the door seal. Now when the thermostat reaches the lower limit, the multimeter should display a resistance of zero. And for this thermostat, this should happen around 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Alright, so the resistance became zero when the temperature was 13 degrees. So that's a little bit below the expected temperature of 18 degrees, although it's still very close. Now to test the upper limit, I will take the thermostat out from the freezer. And when it warms up to 44 degrees, the resistance should become infinity. So the resistance became infinity exactly at the expected temperature of 44 degrees, indicating that this test is very accurate, especially for the upper limit. So let's do one more test on the 12-year-old thermostat. The fridge it comes from has ice building up on the evaporator coil, and I'm going to use this test to rule out the thermostat as the cause. The lower limit for this thermostat is 28 degrees Fahrenheit, so the resistance should become zero around this temperature. Alright, so the resistance just became zero at 22 degrees, which is 6 degrees lower than expected, although it's still fairly close, and it's about the same accuracy as the new thermostat. Let's check the upper limit now. I'll take it out from the freezer. And the upper limit for this one is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's when the resistance should change to infinity. So the resistance became infinity exactly at 60 degrees, meaning that this thermostat is working as expected. To summarize the measurements, both of the thermostats were off by 5 to 6 degrees at the lower limit, which is still fairly close, and they both responded to their upper limit perfectly, so they're both working as expected. If you found this video useful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, your support is really appreciated, and consider subscribing to my channel, I'll be posting more videos in the future. Thanks for watching!